And welcome back to last... <laughs> welcome back to Let's Play E7. Uh, kind of mixing up my words here, but last time we made it through Shinoa Forest after some porcine interruptions and, of course, a bratty child uh, getting in our way. Off screen, I did a little bit of leveling to get us up to level 8 for both Adol and Dogi. This isn't strictly necessary. I just want to have that extra insurance as I go through the dungeon. As for the sake of the video, I'm going to be avoiding most combat just to keep things moving smoothly and hopefully we can get the dungeon out of the way in this video, but we still have to talk to the Eldress first, of course. However, we want to stop off in the item shop because there is stuff for us to buy. First off, let's just check out the synthesis list. As you can see, we've got a couple new weapons here, the Cicero Cutter and the Leather Gauntlet. However, they require quite a few materials that we don't have. Uh, particularly, we need a lot of charcoal, but also monster bones. Now, we'll be able to get a lot of these materials in the upcoming area. Another thing to note here is the Dark Iron Bracelet, a shield-type item that Dogi can equip. Uh, this only takes 10 pieces of charcoal to uh, craft, and there are quite a few bracelet-type items in this that have very, very small uh, material lists for crafting them, and these are a pretty good way to synth repeatedly to get money, so I'm going to make it a point to get as much charcoal as possible going through the dungeon, and I may even consciously farm for it off-screen. Now, uh, something that we can do for money at this point is Marula Incenses. Uh, as you can see, they take Eco Leaves and Spring Water, or Monster Fluid and Kimono Flatters. Uh, we're getting a ton of those from the enemies in the forest, so uh, a good way to make money is to just sell the Marula en Essences, or Incenses, and then uh, synth another one. And as you can see, I gave myself enough materials just so I could have one in my inventory. Now that that's out of the way, uh, the weapons here, uh, the new weapons we can only synth. Uh, otherwise, uh, the stuff to buy is what we saw, uh, the second tier stuff we saw in the Altago City Store. We want to buy some new armor though, so let's get an upgraded armor for Adol, a steel breastplate for Dogi. We want to get a rosette for Adol, and how much money does that leave us with? Nice, that leaves us with enough to get a feather bangle for Dogi. Now we're doing much, much better on defense, so I shouldn't be taking as nearly as much damage. Now, we will actually have an opportunity to come back here and synthesize those new weapons once we get through the dungeon that is going to be coming up. Hmm. Hey, uh, speaking of dungeon, I uh, smell uh, something afoot. But that is not for now. Now we want to head down to the dock area of Shinoa Village first because of this guy. Looks like he has uh, been not so careful with his fishing pole. Chris Goyne, huh? Says he's a big deal. He's got a ego quite like Elk, I suppose. Lots of wood, eh? Ten pieces of any type of wood. Another thing I did off-screen was get ten saplings, because this is a collection quest for wood. This guy wants ten types of each variety of wood that is available to us, uh, well, in the first half of the game. So, we want to give some wood for the fishing pole. First off, we want to give him that plains wood, or that prairie wood that we made sure to collect. 500 gold? Sounds good to me. Makes up for some of the money that we just spent. Ah, oh, man, I, I think we're being taken for a ride here. You know, somehow I don't think he's actually making fishing rods. Uh, you're, there's no way you're that bad, but here, we'll give it to you. Uh, I also got ten cloudy waters, so we'll be able to advance the Waters Valtago quest. And as you can see, he always calls us a uh, sucker. <laughs> I do like him emphasizing that he's that bad. Uh, one thing I should say about the Waters of Altago quest, you actually do not need to collect every variety of water available in the first half of the game to complete it. You just need to collect enough of a specific type of water. But of course, you get extra money for giving him all the different varieties, so we may as well do that. Coming in here, the cutscene starts immediately. Well, that is the only old woman we've seen so far, so I'm going to assume that she's the Eldress. Not sure if I would call her petite, but... I mean, she's just elderly and kind of hunched. Yeah, whatever. Adol, you have weird ways of judging people's physical characteristics. Or maybe that's uh, the uh, unspecified narrator of the game. Anyway, hey lady, we got this letter for you. <laughs> Nailed it right on the head, Doogie. Well, you see... 
You can only imagine what Elk was getting up to. <laughs> well, I, I see uh, she uh, has a fairly old-school attitude for child-rearing. <laughs> yep, ain't nothing wrong with being a punk. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, here's the uh, business that we came here for. And, you know, maybe get some additional strange power. Ow. Ah, sweet, sweet. She's not a, she's not a hardcore traditionalist. Ah, figures. Oh, absolutely. Alright, what do you got for us? Ah, okay. Yeah, if we headed towards the ancient tree, we would not be able to get in. And yeah, the uh, ancient tree is the path behind the village. And we'll tread carefully. We will not disturb the sanctity of the altar tree. What do you got for us, Elk? Oh, you know, we just wanted to poke around and see the altar. Uh, I, I think I know what's coming here. How about you guys? Leave your guesses in the comment right now. Hmm, uh, hmm. Not so sure about taking a kid along. <laughs> well, I can't argue with that logic. Well, how can you just say no to a face like that? <laughs> the world may never know, Doogie. He, he is at least armed, so yes, we get our first third party member. Ooh, the weird bit of phrasing there. But this is Elk. He fights using dual blades, he uh, comes equipped with cloth armor, and he can equip bracelets and bangles, just like Doggy can. Uh, he also comes uh, with, uh, well, his L dual edge you can also buy from the store, but of course he comes with it equipped right away, so no need to worry about that. The only other thing we want to do with him is equip his power wrist. I'll eventually sell that shield ring. As you can see, uh, he learns wheel spin off of the L dual edge, but he has not actually learned it properly yet, so we better switch to him and start spamming it. And for the coming area, for the sake of variety, I'll be utilizing Elk. Now, before we head into the Ancient Tree, as soon as we talk to Eldris Fatima, another uh, quest opens up uh, via Carol Xander. Hmm. Hey, yeah, I remember that little shrine that was at the uh, entrance of the second half of the forest. Sure. Oh, we have uh, plenty of Kamika fruits. Yeah, yeah, we're already uh, done, done with that. So yes, we head back to that shrine, and we're gonna have a couple of things to do with it. But we're gonna save that for after the Ancient Tree. As you can see, Elk comes into the party at level 7, so a little bit weaker than the rest of the party, but uh, not uh, terribly so. And he comes in fully equipped with the best stuff he can possibly have, so... Uh, I'm guessing... Ooh, that is, in fact, a rather large tree. Just put a mustache and some eyebrows on it, and you have a pretty good Great Deku Tree mock-up. Looks like uh, it's gotten a little off the top there, though. And, yes, this is our next dungeon of the game, or... Honestly, our first formal dungeon, uh, the uh, altar cave was not that big. But yes, the ancient tree. 
And the altar is deep inside of it. Oh, of course there's a Titano Elk. Anyways, Elk, as a party member, first couple times I played this game, I did not have a very high opinion of Elk. But as I've played the game, he's kind of grown on me. Uh, I come to appreciate his utility. As you can see, wheel spin, pretty fast move there. Elk is a slash type character, so he deals extra damage against slash weak enemies, as you expect. As you can see, his charge attack there, he throws his dual blade. Not a huge fan of this charge attack, as it has uh, quite a bit of startup and ending lag, which means that. What is honestly supposed to be kind of a fast uh, glass candy character, uh, Elk is remarkably unsafe to use in certain situations. This also won't become apparent until much later, but he doesn't have too many good attacking skills, but he does have a couple of really good ones. Uh, the main reason to use Elk will become apparent later once he gets all his skills. As you can see, we've got these little goblins here. Let's just take these guys out. Get our uh, bestiary filled up, bestiary, however you pronounce that word. I tend to alternate, so I don't think too hard about it as I say it. As you can see, Elk's attack strength, not too great, even with the power risk. Yes, monster bones, so we can get monster bones off of these guys. Quite a bit of treasure to get over here also. Get another shield ring, which again is going to be sold. And over here, get an eco extract, very nice use a bunch of healing items. Now, once we get into the Ancient Tree area, the ore deposits will be much more likely to have charcoal, as it's their common item. Iron ore is actually the rare item, and this is uh, something that I briefly alluded to with the luck metal. It's not always a good idea to have luck metals equipped, because sometimes the uh, rare material is not actually the one you want. Now I've probably been, you probably noticed I've neglected the most important thing to mention about Elk, his SP cost for using skills. As you can see, his base uh, consumption rate is 8. Elk is in fact the, has the cheapest skill usage in the game, so with a full skill gauge he can spam those tier 1 skills, uh, cows come home. So you got a Marula inc incense in here, but we can't do anything with it. Coming into here we're going to find a bunch of spikes that block our way, so we're going to have to come back for this later. Let's uh, just make our way really quickly here, ignore the enemies. I do want to get a lot of monster bones since we'll need them for synthing, but uh, we can uh, do that off screen. Uh, I've taken note of every of, of the levels I've beaten every boss at, so uh, I will always make sure to be at that uh, level when we actually take them on. As you can see, these guys are also a pretty rich source of bone fragments. I didn't uh, really mention Elk's other skill, Rock Fang. That's just a one that shoots up that little spire there. Uh, Rock Fang is notable for how it develops as it levels, but uh, that'll become apparent probably not within this dungeon. As you can see, the ancient tree is locked up tight. We have to examine it first uh, to unlock a new function, which is we will be able to interact with event areas. Just go into our inventory, select the Ancient Trees key, and we can get that gate open. Honestly, it looks like uh, Adol could easily tear that down with his sword, but you know, video game, that option's not going to present itself. Let's head this way. Remember, we want to collect as much charcoal as possible, so always check out uh, these ore deposits. Let's go up here. As you can see, you can climb up the vines here, get up into new areas, but there is nothing that awaits us here, so we're going to have to head back on down. What's that, that yellowy stuff that's hanging on the tree, though? Hmm, that's got my curiosity peak. Something we're gonna have to deal with later, though. As you can see, we got these bug enemies here. Another thing about uh, Elk that's a little annoying is that his uh, aiming with his charge attack can be a little inconsistent. Sometimes he'll just throw it in a completely random direction and it won't hit anything. And honestly, that's pretty frustrating. But it's something we can just deal with. And for the sake of keeping this brief and relatively entertaining, as long as uh, there isn't anything we have to grab, we can just ignore enemies for the most part. Like, uh, well, actually, this is a good time to show off Elk's extra skill, Forest Shield. Forest Shield uh, creates a little bit of damage around Elk, and then it makes him invincible. If enemies attack him while this shield is up, it will not do any damage. So that's pretty unique. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, because it's a sort of active extra skill, you don't get nearly as much uh, extra points when you attack enemies with skills while it's active. So you, uh, later in the game, you'll get skills and abilities that allow you to charge extra really fast. And if, it, if you were allowed to charge it while uh, 
the tree shield, or what was it called again? Forest shield, uh, is active, uh, you would uh, be able to keep that skill going uh, almost instantly. So yeah, they uh, fought with the kibosh on that. As you can see, we got these goblin archers here. We'll just kill them to get them in the bestiary. These guys also drop monster bones, so I'll want to make sure to fight a ton of these guys off screen. We're also going to need plenty of thick hides, but that is not as pressing at the moment since that's just a weapon for Dogi. And nice, we're getting a good amount of charcoal from these chests here. Hmm. It looked like there was some kind of basin over there. As you can see, we've got a lot of spikes dotting the area. There is a giant tree type enemy. We're just going to take out this goblin archer. You should always take out projectile using enemies just so they don't hit you while you're trying to actually fight anything. It can be very annoying if you lose track of them. You can see these guys also drop thick hides, so yeah, these guys will be pretty good for uh, fighting. As you can see, this guy throws out that uh, wave of four projectiles. Best way to deal with them is to just get behind him. See, he doesn't hit us. I could attempt flash guarding. I was trying to use skills there and uh, <laughs> did not have the SP for it. As you notice, one really nice thing about Elk is that off of a single attack, uh, charge attack, he can get a skill usage out of, which is not something that Adol can do on Nightmare Mode. Hmm. Okay, we are able to get past that. Hey, you get some prairie wood. If you didn't have enough to give to the guy in Shinoa Village, uh, uh, I forget, already forgot his name was like Chris Goyne, uh, then you could get the remaining prairie wood you needed there, but we already gave it off to him. Let's see, you got this cool slug enemy right here. As you can see, uh, it is just a neutral type enemy. This is actually a these giant type enemies. Uh, as far as I know, like the vast majority of them do not actually have uh, weapon weaknesses. There are a couple that do, though. Most of them, though, you don't have to worry about which character you're using against them, including some particularly odd choices, really. See if we can't get this uh, wood. All right, I'll let a uh, doggy handle that guy. Yeah, let's uh, back out of here. Don't need too many saplings. I've already uh, used saplings for the big thing we wanted to have them for. All right, let's take this guy out. Has he learned wheel spin yet? Yes, yes. Okay. I was wondering, like, did he actually learn it yet? I didn't notice the prompt come up for it. I was sure, I was certain that I had used it around 20 times or so. Grabbing this chest here, we get a bunch of monster bones. Very nice. Saves me some farming later. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to rely on Cicero cutters for my money grinding. We definitely, by the time we get back to Al Altago City, we want enough to at least be able to afford one of those 10,000 gold weapons for Adol. That will be uh, ideal for the following area. So I definitely will be uh, making a bunch of those... Uh, Bracing the charcoal in order to uh, get the money for that. Yeah, right, let's just take this guy out normal. And what is this basin here? Hmm, tree sap, eh? Ah, you say that like it has special properties. Ah, haha, -ha, mystical power in the tree sap. Okay, I think we can make use of that in an ancient tree. Hmm, come to think of it, where is Elk's mother? Or his father? Hmm, I wonder. But yes, we have ancient tree sap. Just apply it to these yellow areas right here. And the tree within them just sprouts out immediately. And this is how we're going to get forward in the ancient tree. You may have noticed uh, those yellow uh, globs dotting the areas throughout the tree. We just apply some tree sap to them and we can move forward. So let's do that here. And there will be a few places where we can apply this to get some treasure that we otherwise don't have access to. Let's see, we're going to want to get some of this water here, so let's take out this guy. Should uh, allow me to get the rest easily. Uh, also, if you're smashing these eggs... Got hit by a bubble there. If you're smashing these eggs, you can get a little bit of uh, SP off of them. Yeah, this guy's not going to let me do it. Let's just take him out real quick. There we go. Yeah, always a good idea with these durable enemies when they're stunned. Just start whacking them with normal attacks. Get a nice bit of SP off of them. Yeah, it looks like it is just giving cloudy water. I was hoping it would give tainted water, which is the other rare water type that we need right now. And let's see. We're going to want to get that chest over there, so let's just make our way. Hey, more monster bones. I'm uh, actually very pleased with all these crafting materials that we're getting. It'll be uh, very handy for synthesizing a lot of gear. 
Alright, what do we got next? More goblin archers? We can just ignore these guys. No need to deal with them. Alright, let's climb on up. Now, hmm... I, I do have to wonder where the altar is at this point. It doesn't look like there's any obvious way connecting to it from this tree. Let's get the monster fur here. Yeah, I can't get it, but we don't need any more saplings, really. We don't have anything that we want to synthesize that requires them. Alright, looks like we've got a sort of goblin shaman here. Let's just start real spinning this guy. He's not paying attention there. Jeez, these guys are terrible. But no match for us. More monster bones, nice. Get this uh, treasure here, get a bunch of thick hides, which we need plenty of. When I do my uh, off-screen farming, I will probably stick to these areas that have goblin archers, just because we want plenty of those thick hides. All right. So, well, let's uh, head on into here, see what we got here. All right, this is the way forward. We actually want to go to the right first. It is nice that we have that altar there to top off our HP. And as you can see, we can cut right through here. Let's just wheel spin this guy to death. You probably noticed that uh, Adol's running slash uh, got up to level 3. It did get up to level 2 off screen. Getting a little bit more strong. Get some nice iron ore here. So I see a ton of that. White snake ring. This ring makes you immune to poison, but that is actually not why we want it. Very important that you pick that up for later, though. Alright, and let's just check off the edge here. Yeah, nothing. Figured there wasn't, but never hurts to double check in case my memory is faulty, which it often is. If you've been following my videos, you've probably uh, realized that, uh, yeah, not the greatest at remembering things. This is actually a different variety of the tree enemy, so we just want to take this guy out to get him in our best gear. Beast gear. Again, I, I, I have a bad habit of alternating between that one, between saying it phonetically and saying it how it actually is pronounced. We've got these little, uh... Oh, I always forget how to say the name. Oxlal enemies. I know that's how it's spelled, but that's not how you say it. They're like ossels or something? Yeah. I'm probably uh, really making somebody in the comments frustrated right now. I say that like I actually happen to be watching these videos. Someday. Someday. Alright, let's get over here. I head into the water. Oh, oh. Uh, be careful when you're in the water. Uh, in the world of E7, buoyancy does not exist, and your characters just sink to the bottom like rocks. And uh, if you stay under the water too long, you will start to drown, and your HP will drain very, very rapidly. So yeah, be wary of that. Alright, Panacea. This uh, restores your party by curing all their status ailments. 1,000 gold, very nice, gonna be handy later. Alright, we want to kill this guy so we can get that ore deposit right behind him. Let's just start slashing him. And we should be able to finish him off with normal strikes. Get this goblin archer out of the way just so we can get his thick hides and monster bones. Very nice. And of course, the real prize, charcoal. Like I said, we need lots of it. Alright, let's get on up here. You may notice that little red dot on the mini-map there. We want to take that and go down real quick. Absolutely. Yes, there is a treasure here. A silver feather. Uh, this is another ailment accessory. I forget what this one does. Let's uh, actually take a look at that real quick. This one prevents the heavy status. Heavy is actually an extremely annoying status that uh, greatly reduces your movement speed and also really, really gimps your dodging. A character with the heavy status basically cannot defend themselves via dodging. Now that we open that up, uh, let's see. There's a couple of places that we can apply some trees at. And of course, we got that convenient uh, shortcut back to the entrance, so we're going to apply some tree sap here. Create a, another path. And let me see. As you can see, there is a, another uh, entryway over there, but I don't think we can get to it from here. We're just going to head back. Uh, if I can't remember how you get there, uh, I hope I can remember. <laughs> It'd be embarrassing that I couldn't, but. Uh, we can always just go back for it later. It is not a big deal. Careful of those spikes, they kill you really fast. And let's get on up here. Hey, what's behind this? A red treasure chest. Red treasure chests have artifacts in them. Artifacts are special equipable items uh, usable from your inventory that equip to your whole party. Diamond boots, eh? <laughs> Uh, I like that. I like that. Good joke, Elk. Hmm. Looks like he's remembering something.
anyway, with that little bit of exposition out of the way, this is, of course, explaining party equipment, uh, what I just did. But yes, we'll just equip that. As you can see, uh, I'll just give us a quick tutorial. Well, let's throw on the diamond boots. These boots protect us from spikes, and in fact, destroy them. So, we don't have to worry about taking damage from these anymore. Looks like we're gonna have to... What I'm gonna do here is just do this. Get this guy out of the way really quickly. We're going to, I'm going to be doing a ton of fighting off screen, so I don't really want to worry too much about, uh, you know, wasting my extra skills. Here we get a Kamika Extract. This is a revival item. It affects your whole party, restores 100 HP, and if there are any dead allies, it revives them. Very important that you use those properly. Don't use them if only two characters are, or only one character is dead. You want to save them for when you have two fallen party members. I say dead, of course, of course I mean unconscious, but you know, video game jargon. And let's head on down. Alright, let me see here. Uh, we want to get this charcoal here. Oh, hey, we got a green stone from that also. That is the rare item. Okay, I misspoke earlier. It's actually, uh, let me see here. Uh, I just want to... Yeah, we got to figure out how to get there. Uh, I misspoke earlier. Uh, oh, no, 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 wait, 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 right here. I misspoke earlier. The uh, rare item is not uh, iron ore, or at least not on every deposit. Not every ore deposit has the same item list in some of these dungeons. Uh, it was actually greenstone was the other item we could get. Uh, greenstone is actually one of the items that uh, Teresa ruin ruin us. Ruin it? Ruin us? I forget her name. <laughs> Teresa, Teresa. That's one of the items that Teresa wants, and she's willing to pay a pretty penny for it. So we'll have to remember to give that to her when we get back to Altago. And of course, here is the treasure we were looking for. A Vitality Belt, aka here's 500 gold. <laughs> I'm sure those accessories mean something to somebody, but for me they're just extra money. Power wrists are where it, at, where it is at for right now. And later on there's going to be uh, accessories that affect the game in a much more mechanical sense. That uh, just give you way more power than any raw statistical bonus could give you. But now that we have the iron or the diamond boots, we can go back to that area that was covered with spikes that we came across when we first got here. Now, off to the side here, you may notice this path, but it is submerged in water, and we have to go way too far to actually make it without drowning. So we'll have to save that for later when we can get around the whole drowning thing. But with that taken care of, as you can see, now that we've entered with the diamond boots, we get a cutscene. Hmm. You able to sense something? Hmm. Strange. A Titana, maybe? Well, I can definitely hear it now, so... I'd say uh, Elt's intuition is on the money. But that's just something we're going to have to worry about when we actually get into that room. So let's just break through these spike spikes and hit the monument. Now like I said, when I defeated this boss in my previous playthrough, I was level 10. And outside of that, I'd like to have uh, some more money and some more equipment, regardless. We have the materials to create the new weapons for Adel and Dogi, and I'll probably few farm a few more materials so that I can create a ton of those bracelets and sell them. So yeah, lots of charcoal farming, and we'll probably get a decent supply of monster bones and thick hides, just so I have them for later. But that'll be something I take care of off screen so I don't have to bore you with the minor details. Let's just create a save in a separate slot here, and that is where we'll end the video. Next time, we'll see what the heck is making that noise. Until then, goodbye.